with Marilyn and Sarah. We are so very, very happy to have you with us today. And we have an amazing guest, Stephen Scott, who wrote a book called The Joseph Principles. Holy buckets, you totally want to watch this interview. Very, very powerful. But mom, you have a really nice testimony to share with us as well. I have a wonderful testimony to share. Here was John. He was feeling hopeless and beaten down. He was on Facebook and watched Marilyn's video on It's Not Over Until You Win and felt a renewed sense of hope and faith. That's so powerful, Mom. I love that. And I love that people can really experience Jesus encouraging oh. them and loving them, yeah, no matter in all these different ways. So thank you so much for watching and joining. We'd invite you to call for prayer because you probably need some answers from God in your life that might be related to your finances. Maybe you have some issues with your health. Maybe you've gotten a diagnosis from the doctor recently that was very discouraging. Maybe you're having some family challenges, dynamics. Maybe you're watching right now and you're kind of at a crossroads and you need to make some decisions and you're really struggling uh, for God to give you some input, direction, and help you with that. I just encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website, and we know that God answers prayer. And I love this verse. It always encourages me. In Luke 1, it says, nothing is impossible with God. That's 100% the truth. Nothing is impossible. And partners, I just want to say thank you so much. You help us to cover the earth with the word and connect everyone to the heart of God. So thank you for being such an immense blessing. Now, in just a moment here, we're going to join the interview with Stephen Scott. And Stephen Scott is a very, very powerful man. He's been used by God for many decades. And this interview can help you transform tragedy into triumph and trash into treasure. God has good things. Do you need God's supernatural favor? Now available, Marilyn's new book, Wide Open Doors, Heavenly Favor for Opportunity, Influence, and Success. Walk with Marilyn as she takes you through the pages of scripture and into the lives of Ruth, Naaman, Esther, Abigail, and David, sharing how God has revealed the success of those who live under his favor. Through their lives, you will discover how favor can change your circumstances, your health, your family, and even your nation. Marilyn also shares her own stories of supernatural favor and how you can apply the principles she has learned throughout her 50 years of ministry. You will also gain practical insight on how to take hold of heaven's favor and let it guide you into unusual places of opportunity, influence, and success. Heavenly favor is ready and waiting for you. Get your copy today. Thank you so much for joining today with Marilyn and Sarah. We are delighted to have time with you. And I'm super excited to introduce to you our guest today, Stephen Scott. Thank you so much. Oh, my delight. Thank you. You are wonderful. <laughs> well, we I'm love full you. of wonder. I'm not wonderful, but I am full, full of, of wonder. wonder. Yeah. Yes, so am For I. the Lord Jesus. Yes. And Stephen, not everybody in our audience is familiar with you. So can you give us a quick little like thumbnail bio and then we'll hop into your new book, Good. The Joseph Principles. Okay. Well, um, I flunked out of nine jobs in my first six years after college. Couldn't succeed no matter how hard I tried. Uh, Gary Spot Molly, my best friend, was visiting me from Chicago um, after I lost my fifth job. I was 26 years old. And I said, Gary, I don't understand why I'm failing. And he said, well, let me pray about it. And he came back the next day and he said, how would you like to be wiser than all your bosses? I thought, yeah, right. And he said, no, you can do something, do it for two years and two years will be wiser than all your bosses. In five years, you'll probably be a millionaire. And that made me laugh because I was so broke. We had grocery, we had breakfast that day because some ladies from a Bible study left groceries on my doorstep. Okay. Anonymously. <laughs> and, uh, I, okay, Gary, what do I do? Well, he got me into the book of Proverbs mm -hmm. and that changed my life, changed my life. And in two years, um, I had started my own business in two and a half years. We, we'd become millionaires and, uh, now all using the principles and the strategies, Proverbs full of wisdom. And he had me go through Proverbs 24 times in two years. And that's what changed everything. I went from atheism to Christianity when I was 16. So that was a big change. And um, God's just really blessed my business life. I've had lots of businesses that we've started. Um, and we started a little company with 
$5,000. And within five months, we were at a million dollars a week in sales. And by the time I retired 35 years later, we had done billions and billions of dollars in sales. So my business life was highly blessed, not so I could get rich or anything, but God has a purpose for money. It wasn't to just hoard it all and end up in my pocket. We really supported Gary's ministries and and so on. But um, the most important part of my life is the Lord Jesus. That I, I in um, 2006, I spent two years organizing all of Christ's statements, 1,900 statements into 225 topics. And that came out in 08 called The Greatest Words Ever Spoken. And uh, from that point on, my focus was primarily the incredible teachings of Jesus Christ. For most of the last um, 16 years, I've gone to sleep uh, listening to the Gospels. And uh, because he made some promises about his words that are amazing and beyond anything we would expect. And I, I found that as I studied his words. So that's been my focus. And uh, God's blessed my writing. Uh, Larry King used to have me on. And of course, you guys were kind enough to have me on. So my books have done real well. And that's, well, but you are always like Gary said, you're always the most fun interview. So that's my background. I'm married with seven kids and 14 grandchildren. Amazing. And you know, you might be watching right now and maybe you're struggling with your finances. You're like, whoa, man, <laughs> I'm just having a hard time. And we'd love to pray for you that God would help you with your finances mm -hmm. and that it wouldn't be a hindrance, but rather it would be a vehicle. Uh, to promote and, and really accentuate Jesus' presence throughout the world. And you know something, Stephen, you did this book, The Joseph Principles. Mm -hmm. And I really like this book because you're talking here about healing hurt and trauma, unresolved trauma. Right. Why did you why did you start? What, what, what captured your interest to do this? Well, it, people think that it's about Joseph. It really isn't. We see 12 principles in his life, 12 attributes that any believer would love to have, but he never told us how we can get, how can we get his level of faith? How can we get his level of intimacy with God to where he heard his whispers? Uh, how can we um, uh, forgive the unforgivable and, and so on? Well, he never taught us how to do that, but Jesus did. So the on the inside flap, it says, from the life of Joseph and the teachings of Jesus. There's over 100 statements of Christ in the book that solve so many of our problems. Um, God's number one desire for us and for all of you is intimacy. He said in Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, uh, he said, uh, let him who glories glory in this, that he understands, and in the Hebrew, intimately knows me, the Lord God. And that's his desire. In fact, Jesus went further, John 17, 3, and this is eternal life, that they might intimately know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom thou sent. So the book's really about overcoming the obstacles, the barriers that keep most believers from moving into intimacy. We all know about Jesus. We know about God, and that keeps us here. But he wants us to move into an intimate relationship, not just a casual relationship with him. That's what he calls us to. So that's what the book's really about, is overcoming these terrible obstacles that stand in our way of having intimacy with the Father. Mm -hmm. And you're watching right now, I'd encourage you to hop on the phone, grab your copy of The Joseph Principles, because I think for you and me, I know that's one of the core cries of my heart. Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. That's 100% like my mantra. And I know for you, you want to know God. And so this will help you in overcoming some of those obstacles and hindrances. And what would you say would be like some of those obstacles that we have? Well, uh, one is um, past traumas. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're told in all things and for all things, give thanks for this is the will of God toward you. But how do I give thanks? How does a woman who was abused in her family terribly, uh, how does she overcome that? So what do they do? They bury it because they can't face it and they bury the trauma. And so the very first chapter, we show you how a, a, a thing that Gary did with me and we used to do it in counseling, uh, how we can treasure hunt even the deepest traumas. We've had people who have been subject to having children murdered, uh, subject to uh, incest and horrible, horrible things. And do you know that within 15 minutes, they're set free? 
and they didn't even know it was blocking their intimacy with God. But it's why they couldn't really trust God because God let that happen. So we have a thing called treasure hunting where whenever there's any trauma in our life, it creates diamonds and they get hidden in the trauma, the rubble of the trauma. So we take you through a little process that Gary pioneered called treasure hunting and we find those diamonds. And when you see these massive 20 carat, 50 carat diamonds, you become thankful even for the trauma, even though it was perpetrated by evil people, you can say, God, thank you. Thank you for letting me experience that because now I see, I see that diamond. So that's that's just chapter one. Yeah, and you talk about that as far as charcoal. Yes. Right, and you talk about having the charcoal and you look at that to do, you know, like our, our grills and all mm -hmm. that. And then you put that and you're like, put that next to a diamond. So talk a little bit about that because I think that was really well, insightful. And that was one of the things that Gary taught me. See, nothing's original in me. <laughs> It's borrowed, and I write about it when it works. So none of this is theory. None of it's theology, doctrine. It's right out of the teachings of Christ. Uh, in that case, the the um, uh, coal uh, for coal to become a diamond, it needs about seven hundred thousand pounds of pressure uh, of pressure for about three billion years. Okay, wow. for coal to be turned into diamonds. Now God could have made diamonds right out in creation. You know, right. he's God. Right. But, uh, but so what we do, you know, a, a pound of coal is worth about a dollar on today's market. Uh, not coal, a pound of uh, barbecue, those briquettes, yep. but or coal. And, um, but when that's converted to a pound of diamonds, that's worth 17 to $20 million. Yeah. See, same, same amount of carbon. It's just been under pressure. And, and that's what happens. We resent the pressure. You know, I lost nine jobs in six years. And I was saying, God, why, why are you doing that to me? Why, why don't you answer my prayer? When I treasure hunted, I found out whew, each one of those job losses created a ginormous diamond. And in fact, it was, each one was a puzzle piece that allowed me to have success in job number 10, where we created billions of dollars worth of companies. Wow. You know, I just encourage you hop on the phone, get on the website. What's the trauma? What's the pain? What's the charcoal? What's the, the garbage in your life? And how can God use that and make that a diamond, make that a treasure? Hop on the phone, get on the website, grab your copy of the Joseph Principles, because all of us have had trauma and hurt and pain, but there's gold in that challenge. Marilyn and Sarah have been covering the earth with the word on television for over 50 years. But television isn't the only way their ministry can be viewed. Today with Marilyn and Sarah can be seen on platforms such as YouTube, Roku, Fire TV, as well as podcasts on iTunes and Google. It's easier than ever to be encouraged with God's work at home, work, or on the go. You can replay any program at any time. Tune in and be blessed. Hey there, I want to encourage you to download our app on your phone. You're like, really serious? Absolutely. We have some amazing things on our app, really convenient for you. We have today's program. We have opportunities to pray for you. We have places for you to give and partner with us. We also have things that will help you know what events are coming up and group tours that you could join, as well as a Bible reading plan, daily Bible reading plan. This app is super relevant, very convenient, and super helpful for your daily living with Jesus. Has life gone the way you thought it would? Or has fear, doubt, anxiety, and despair replaced your feelings of safety, security, and confidence? For your gift of $35 or more, we will send you Stephen Scott's book, The Joseph Principles, featuring the biblical figure who suffered trauma after trauma, yet used his suffering as a tool. This book gives you what you need to heal your hurts and successfully navigate through your current trials and any future adversities. We will also send you Sarah's Hey God Can We Talk book, Marilyn's Overcoming Hurts, Habits, and Hangups teaching CD, and our Trust Scripture card. And for your gift of $85 or more, we will send you our beautiful healing prayer shawl. This anointed piece will help you enter into His presence to receive healing. Take hold of your abundant life. Call or click today for this powerful offer.
Welcome back to Today with Marilyn and Sarah. Now, we are looking at something that everyone needs. You said, do you think I need this? Yes, I know you need it because I know people. I'm a pastor's wife. I know people. And this book, The Joseph Principles, talking about turning adversity and heartache into miraculous living. Who doesn't have heartache? Who doesn't have adversity? If you say you don't have any or never did, you're lying. You know, this is the real truth we have. So The Joseph Principles is a book that you must have. And I can tell you, because I know from experience about some of the things that I experienced, like molestation and some of that. Mm. And, you know, God took that and turned it into a blessing because I get to minister to people. Amen. And they say, well, you understand because yep. you've been through it. So in this book, you talk about treasure hunting. What is the most difficult situation you have ever had to treasure hunt? This you love this book, isn't this right? Yeah, yeah. We I I have a ministry with uh, parents who have lost children, and it's not a ministry I formalized. It's not one I sought out, but I a woman chased me out of a an arena when I spoke to ten thousand women because my son had been miraculously healed from testicular cancer. That same year, her son died from testicular cancer, and. Uh, so she chased me down to say, what would you have done if your son had died? And I gave her a real honest answer. I'd said I'd be crushed every day. I'd have to tell myself, get out of bed because I wouldn't want to. Every day I would have to tell myself throughout the day, breathe in and breathe out. I said, I can't even imagine that kind of pain. And she said, well, my son died of testicular cancer. And um, we prayed, we frat fasted. And uh, God didn't heal him. He even prayed and fasted and God didn't heal him. And uh, so what happened was I shared some things that the Holy Spirit gave me right then and there. And literally in the space of three or four minutes, we broke the shackles of the mastery of grief. Grief is a God-given emotion. And we have a whole chapter on grief in here. It's a God-given emotion. So it's not to be hated. But what happens, it, it moves into the throne of our heart and replaces the Lord Jesus. Jesus said, no man can serve two masters, but you wake up grieving, you grieve all day, you go to bed grieving, then you wake up grieving again, and you'd wake up three or four times in the night grieving. It's paralyzing, and it literally renders us effectiveless in God's kingdom. God isn't finished with you just because you grieve. Okay, or that you've had a tragedy. He has a purpose for your life until your last breath. And we forget that when we're in this deep grief. So what happened is we, in a space of a few minutes, she I told her, you don't, Christ doesn't have to be the master of your life. Um, one you make one decision. No, because grief will be pulling to get back that position of mastery. So you're just responsible for the moment you're in. And that leads us into the other area that we really get into, and that is how can we live in the moment for Christ? You know, Paul said, take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Most of us can't do that. But in this book, we show you, because people spend 50% of their waking moments, either in the past or the future. Past might be, my wife said something unkind to me today and I can't get by it, or somebody cut me off on the way to work. Future might be, I wonder what's for lunch. Meanwhile, uh -huh. somebody's right in front of you and we're missing the power of the moment and God only dwells in the moment we're in. All miracles. Say that again. God only dwells in the moment, the present moment we're in. He's here right now because he promised wherever two or three are gathered together, I'll be. And all miracles happen in the moment. So if I want to move into intimacy with God and if I want to see the miracles of the moment, I have to know how to come into the moment. Anytime we're fearful, worried, anxious, or we're anticipating our mind is in the future. Those are red flags that tell us, hey, you're in the future. And Jesus said, don't do that. Mm -hmm. And anytime we're brokenhearted, sad, discouraged, depressed, 
our mind is in the past. And Jesus said, uh, he who puts his hand to the plow looking back is not fit for service in the kingdom of God. You can't plow a straight line. You can't be productive when your mind's there. So Christ says, come into the moment. See, right now, you two and your audience are my moment. And so we show people how to do that. And when they do, it changes their whole life. And literally in one day, 24 hours, they start. They become much more aware of the people that they're with. They engage at the at the level. And we go through the woman at the well and we show you how to do that from Christ's perspective. It's the most life-changing concept. And guess what it does? It delivers you from the power of anxiety, worry, and fear. And it delivers you from the power of regret, sorrow, sadness, discouragement, and depression. I want to encourage you, hop on the phone right now, because I bet you every single person watching, you've got fears, <laughs> you've got anxieties, you've got sadness, broken heart, every single person. And I want to encourage you, grab your copy of The Joseph Principles. It's not just that we, you know, have like, like pray a magic prayer and blah, blah, blah. Mm. But really, it's biblical principles that help you to walk into the moment so you can live now, not in the past, and not anxious about the future. Hop on the phone, get on the website, grab your copy of the Joseph Principles, because I know what Stephen is sharing with you, a lot of you, your hearts are stirring. You're like, ooh, could that be true? Could that be possible? And when you talk to that lady who lost her son from mm -hmm. testicular right. cancer, um, when you walked her through that, what happened? Oh. In the moment, we, we overcame a couple obstacles, and I get into that in the chapter on living in the moment. So you, you overcome those obstacles real quick. See, there's seven obstacles that keep you grieving, and they're false beliefs like um, God wasn't there. I, I'm dealing with a woman whose 42-year-old uh, daughter was murdered right in front of her own children, Oof. and um, yeah, right now she's part of my of this ministry. And we honestly, in the space of 15 minutes, it's not that you get rid of grief. You just take it off the throne. You put it in your side pocket and you pull it out when you need it. Okay. I still grieve my mom dying many years ago. My dad, I really grieve all day. Every day I have a moment of grief for losing my best friend, Gary. Yeah. Okay. I grieve for the terrible things I've done. I, you know, and I stand amazed at God's grace that he could. So there's a place for grief, but it was never intended to replace God on the throne of your heart. So the good news is you don't have to make that replacement once and for all for the rest of your life. And that's what I told her. This is what delivered her. I said, we just have to make him the master of the moment we're in. And we can do that. And so we did it. She was set free. She had been laboring under this for a year, handcuffed, paralyzed. And it was all, that's the reason she came to the conference. She hoped God would give her something. And I was the only man that spoke to those 10,000 women and it was devotional. I, I had, had just had this experience with my son, but um, there's no need for grief to be your master. So we break down the false things. Another one is, this is final. No, God's got all eternity to fix things. And uh, what happened, look at Joseph, okay? God used that terrible thing his brothers did. He flipped it, and we talk about the big flip in the book. And uh, he flipped it, and then Joseph could truly thank God for what his brothers did. He he realized God was sovereign. When my brothers were throwing me in that well, and then when they pulled me out and sold me into slavery, God was there. God was there. And once he realized that, he submitted his will and his heart to the Father. Mm -hmm. And so powerful. And and the, the transformation that happened and the redemption mm -hmm. for his oh, family. Oh. oh, my goodness. And he says it. You meant it for evil, God meant it for good. Yeah. Save two nations. Yeah. Okay. And Israel is what they are today because of that. Yeah. See, it carried on for thousands of years. Yeah. Yeah. And you have no idea. You have no idea what God can do with pain and hurt and hardship and struggles, betrayals, all the things. I mean, Joseph went through all kinds of stuff, but God, but God, Amen. <laughs> but God 
And that's the, that's the final, final answer, but God. Mm -hmm. So hop on the phone, get on the website, grab your copy of the Joseph Principles. You know, I'd suggest you get at least three or five copies because I bet you have a few friends who could read this and also experience God's redemptive power in their lives as well. Has life gone the way you thought it would? Or has fear, doubt, anxiety, and despair replaced your feelings of safety, security, and confidence? For your gift of $35 or more, we will send you Stephen Scott's book, The Joseph Principles, featuring the biblical figure who suffered trauma after trauma, yet used his suffering as a tool. This book gives you what you need to heal your hurts and successfully navigate through your current trials and any future adversities. We will also send you Sarah's Hey God Can We Talk book, Marilyn's Overcoming Hurts, Habits, and Hangups teaching CD, and our Trust Scripture card. And for your gift of $85 or more, we will send you our beautiful healing prayer shawl. This anointed piece will help you enter into His presence to receive healing. Take hold of your abundant life. Call or click today for this powerful offer. This has been such a powerful interview. Stephen, would you pray for our audience to have miraculous living? Sure, I'd love to. Thank you. Father, first of all, I just thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you that you didn't leave us orphans, uh, that after you sent your Son, you sent your Holy Spirit. I pray for every member in this audience, Father, that they will want to move from wherever they are in their relationship with you, that they can begin to move toward intimacy with you, that they'll learn uh, the love language that Jesus talks about in John 14 and love you the way you want to be loved, Father, and that they'll love your son. We thank you for the promises of scripture that you haven't left us alone. Uh, Father, I ask that you would give them hope right now, well-founded, confident belief that that which you've promised will be fulfilled because that is hope. I pray that they might come to know the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, that they might grow their faith. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want you to say today, is the best day of my life because Jesus Christ lives big in me today. Amen. That's so good. And you know, as well, if you have a need in your life, we'd love to pray for you. You can hop on the phone, get on the website for any need, financial need, a physical need, maybe a, a family need, any of those things. God can absolutely come in and bring redemption and, and absolutely improvement, upgrade from anything you're struggling with. So hop on the phone, give us the opportunity and privilege to pray with you and grab your copy of The Joseph Principles. It will change your life. Mm -hmm.